would you have to solve an equation? We don't really solve equations in our daily lives, do we? Oh yes, we do. Every time you perform any kind of mathematical calculation, you are solving an equation. When you go to the shop to buy stationery, or when you pay an auto rickshaw driver and he returns you the change, whenever your PT teacher arranges you in rows and columns, all these small, small things involve simple, basic equations. It is just that we aren't consciously aware of them. Let me show you how. Say I had some chocolates and my friends gave me five more and now I have 10 chocolates in total. So what did I have? Well, of course, I have a great friend who gives me chocolates, but I mean to ask how many chocolates did I initially have before my friend gave me five more? Wow, you can answer it orally and say that I initially had five chocolates with me. But how did you arrive to this answer? That's because you mentally solved an equation to find the answer. Let's understand how this happened. If I were to write this situation mathematically, I would assume that initially I had some chocolates, say X chocolates. My friend gave me five more, which means I have X plus five chocolates now. But since we know that I have 10 chocolates now, it means that X plus five is equal to 10. And what we have here is an equation in the variable x, where if we solve for x, we will be able to find out the number of chocolates I initially had with me. And this equation x plus 5 is equal to 10 is called a linear equation in one variable. 1. Why 1? Because it contains only one variable that is x. But why is it linear? Do you remember studying about a term called degree in polynomials? If you consider this equation, the highest degree of this equation is 1, which makes it linear. And so the type of equations where the maximum degree of all the variables in the equation is 1 are called linear equations. Now to solve this equation, we take the 5 from the left hand side or LHS and subtract it from the 10 on the right hand side or RHS. So we get x is equal to 10 minus 5 which gives us x is equal to 5. Or we simply subtract 5 from each side so we get x plus 5 minus 5 is equal to 10 minus 5 but 5 minus 5 is 0 so our LHS becomes x plus 0 while the RHS has 10 minus 5 which is equal to 5. Now x plus 0 is nothing but x so we end up with x is equal to 5 and that is the number of chocolates I had before my friend gave me 5 more. Did you get the calculation? Now we can even show this solution diagrammatically on a number line. We start by drawing a straight horizontal line. Then we fix a point on this line and number it 0. This 0 will be the origin. Next, we'll mark equidistant points on either sides of this origin, say 5 points on each side. So the points on the right hand side of the 0 are taken as positive integers and the points on the left hand side of the 0 are taken as negative integers. Do you remember seeing this somewhere else? That's right, we saw the number line while studying number systems. Moving on, we found out that the solution for the equation x plus 5 is equal to 10 would be x is equal to 5. And this can be simply represented by the number 5 on the number line, which is a single point on the number line. Now, can x have any other value? Think about it. If yes, put x is equal to say 3, the LHS of my equation would be 3 plus 5, which is 8. But 8 is not equal to 10, which is the RHS of the equation. And when the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation are not equal, it's not a true equation. So x can only have one value, which is x is equal to 5.
and this means that this equation has only one value of x or we say that this linear equation has a unique solution and so it cannot have more than one solution. Now let's consider another situation. My friend and I both had a few chocolates and so we decided to save them for a picnic and kept them in a jar. On the day of the picnic, we counted the total number of chocolates in the jar and we found them to be 20. But I found myself being unable to figure out how many chocolates should I take because I don't remember how many chocolates I put into the jar in the first place. And then I saw my friends struggling with the same question. So now we both are uncertain about the number of chocolates we put in the jar. If I represent this mathematically, I would say I had X chocolates and my friend had Y chocolates and together we have X plus Y chocolates, which is equal to 20. That is X plus Y is equal to 20. So this expression also has an equal to sign and it has two variables on the left hand side and a constant 20 on the right hand side which means even this is an equation but it is entirely different kind of equation. How? Well, this one has two variables but its maximum degree is still 1 and an equation with degree as 1 having two variables is known as a linear equation in two variables. Now, can you think of a way to solve this equation? That is, do you know what are the possible values of x and y that can satisfy the equation? Let's start by making some assumptions. Suppose I had put 5 chocolates in the jar and this means that x is equal to 5. In this case, my friend would get 15 chocolates or y is equal to 15 because x plus y is equal to 20 and if x is equal to 5, y will be equal to 20 minus 5 that is 15. But if I had 10 chocolates that would make x equal to 10 and so my friend would have the rest of the 10 chocolates that is y would be equal to 20 minus 10 which is 10. Similarly, what if I had 12 chocolates then my friend would have 20 minus 12 that is 8 chocolates and so on. So we can represent these solutions in the form of an ordered pair where we write the values of x and y together in round brackets separated by a comma with the value of x written first followed by the value of y. Therefore, the solutions of the equation x plus y is equal to 20 would be 5 comma 15, 10 comma 10, 12 comma 8 and so on. Now since there are chocolates, we are considering whole numbers. But what if we were dealing with money? Suppose my friend and I were saving up for the picnic and putting in a few paises every day in the jar and on the day of the picnic, when we counted 20 rupees, we could also have our individual shares in the form of fractions, right? That is a possibility. Say, my share in this amount is of 2 rupees and 50 paise or 2.5 rupees. If I substitute x is equal to 2.5 in x plus y is equal to 20, I would get... 2.5 plus y is equal to 20 or y is equal to 20 minus 2.5 which is 17.5. So my friend's share would be 17.5 rupees or 17 rupees and 50 paise. In this case, if I am allowed to assume fractional values for x, I can actually take infinite values of x because we know that there are infinite fractions between any two integers. So the equation x plus y is equal to 20 has infinite solutions. But before we move ahead with the solutions of a linear equation, let's look at an important concept that is the general form of linear equations in two variables. Now any linear equation can be expressed in the form of 
ax plus by plus c is equal to 0, correct. And this expression of linear equations in two variables is called the general form of linear equation in two variables. Now let's observe the general equation and see how it is written. Tutamate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.